Hello, my good friends, Roger Mudfossil University, owner of Electron Flood Theory and uh, new owner of Particle Physics and uh, discoverer of the uh, nucleus is only comprised of electrons. Now, <clears throat> I know CERN is probably very jealous because we did this with a smaller budget somewhat smaller and we understand now that the nucleus is nothing but electrons and there is nothing but electrons and that is called electron flood theory and I can show them instead of just hypothesize they call this electron neutrino showers electron neutrinos are the smallest little particles that exist and they have no clue how to find them although I can show you them in copious quantities want to see some Okay, my friends, I'm just going to have fun with this because nobody seems to be paying attention, and it is deadly research. So, let's take a look at it. Now, it's Mud Fossil University, and here is what you're seeing. This is red pulse laser, just going through the air, and it would never do any different than that. <clears throat> that would be it. Now, a venturi forces the particle to pull out and become seen. These are the Higgs fields that they look for. We found those. This literally is the photon. And they are back-to-back -back electrons. The white and the black, the white and the black. Electron, electron. Now, when they concuss through the Venturi, we can see the black and the white separate. And the black is the boson, which has no energy. Watch. Okay, so you saw the electron showers, I believe. Now this is what the nucleus looks like, and it's all electrons. And we can separate the positive portion from the negative portion, because they are dipoles. And there it is being separated, the black dots. As you saw before, the photon is right there, back-to-back -back electrons. That's what the electrons look like, a strong force and a weak force. The black part is the weak force, and it just rolls away and has no power whatsoever, and the strong force explodes. Always the strong force will surround the weak force, and then more strong forces will try to get in to attach to the weak force. They will be kept at quantum distances. That's the nature of nuclear particles, of any atomic particles. Now, there is your bosons, and not only are they seen by you, you can understand exactly what you saw, because you saw them come through as photons, and now we are seeing the black ball disassociate from the white. The white explodes like a bomb, obviously. The black balls are just these little round black balls. They never did anything. They just said, okay, I'm out of here. Now, and they don't mind touching each other, so they will always be forced to the center, and the negatives will always surround them on the outside because they want to stay away as far as they can from everybody else. So that's what sets up these very intricate nuclear patterns. Okay, my friends, I'm going to leave it at this. This is Seeker, which does fabulous work. And they are looking like they want to try to figure a way to open up this research that Rod and I have uh, pioneered, literally. Now, they are talking about new forces. Everybody is. I mean, you go out here, this axion particle physics, this entire universe is held together by new powers and everything everything is different than they thought our axions of dark matter they're coming up with all these new words well and he's got some new ones here too but we understand them intimately a rod and i now here we go we are going to watch what they have to say here on seekers it's strong cp violation if this field exists then there should be a particle called an axion to go with it axions should be chargeless very light and incredibly abundant. Now, you saw those little black balls and you saw the white particles. Well, the little black balls have no power and appear to be quite abundant. Hmm. Particle that's hard to find and doesn't interact with anything except through gravity. It sounds like another candidate for dark matter to me. And indeed, since the 1980s, scientists have been hunting for axions in labs. As you might have guessed, they haven't found them yet. 
but they're still looking for them with research like the ADMX G2 experiment. Axions are not the only possible solution to the strong CP problem, and when we eventually do figure out why this expected, unexpected event isn't occurring, it'll be exciting to see where physics takes us next. If the search for axions and their relation to dark matter has piqued your curiosity, check out this focal point episode on how today's scientists are attempting to hunt them down. All right, that's what I want to do, is hunt them down. Let's uh, work together. I mean, I, I, Rod and I only have very, very limited resources. And somebody should be taking care of Rod and getting him some equipment and doing whatever they need to do to get him going. He's over in Australia. I'm in the United States. We just basically, you know, go through Facebook back and forth. Very, very limited interactions. But plenty that I need. I'm getting everything I need and Rod I'm, as far as I'm concerned is doing a hell of a good job and he came up with the eventuary and this is time that they should understand that and they do understand you look up the 21 centimeter line for hydrogen if you have to hide as force hydrogen atoms thousands of them at a second into a, a venturi where they're crushing into each other they are going to have extreme interactions it's simple as that and nobody will interact with with me. Very, very hard to understand. If they're really looking for something, it's impossible to just dismiss these things I'm showing. Impossible for anybody has any level of competence. So what is the motivation for just dismissing it? I have no idea.